Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I did my full tarot collection video and my full oracle collection video a while back and now I'm just gonna upkeep my collection with haul videos. I don't know how often they're gonna happen. That's yet to be determined. I have 12 today um, that three were sent by the creators, three were sent by you guys, and then six that I purchased. Um, as always, links will be below. They will be affiliate links, mostly. Not all of them actually, but most of them. And as always, I'm going to show close-up shots of all the artwork and all the cards. I'm going to talk about the card stock we already have established. If you are new here, uh, I always talk about card stock. So that'll be up there always. I'm very, very finicky about card stock. I know it's a snobby thing, whatever. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Mercury. I like nice things. I'm sorry. So, and then the artwork itself, my subjective viewpoint on it, and how well it interprets the conception of the deck itself. Okay? Okay. I'm gonna try to not take forever, but we know how I get. Timestamps for all decks are below. If you just wanna skip around and you don't give a shit, knock yourselves out. I plan to be as honest as always. Here we go. All right, so first up is the Lux X Ombre deck. Now, I am going to go over all the pros and cons for all these decks and I definitely have pros and cons for every deck. So that being said, with this deck, this was sent to me by the creator. There are mm, just a couple of cons really. Uh, one is it's in French. <laughs> so I don't speak French and I was nervous about that because I was like, how much French do I need to know to read these cards? Turns out you only need to learn four French words, which I, I have yet to learn to be honest. You need to learn page, knight, queen, and king because they're not really indicative um, in the cards. The The only other negative that I have to say about this entire deck is, aside from the French thing, which if you speak French, not even a negative. I don't though. Uh, the only other thing I have to say is that the artwork is, it's pippish, right? And it's it's not Rider Waite. It's not gonna, I mean, it's Rider Waite system, but it's not going to evoke any remnants of Rider Waite artwork. Um, everything except the major is like pip art and then the majors are really minimalist and um simple they don't they don't feel like right away art so um that's the only downside because i can't tell which is the page knight king queen because there's no like people depicted the majors are super easy to read because they have numbers on them and as long as you know your majors which i guess the one thing i would say is that this deck is definitely not made for beginners if you don't know how to read tarot this will be really difficult for you because you have to already know your tarot. If you do though, this is a really awesome deck and I will go through all the pros now because there are a lot. One, I don't know if this comes standard or not. I would assume so, but I didn't purchase it. So I don't know. Uh, velvet bag, tuck box. And I know you're thinking tuck box, what the fuck's right? But look it, I'm not just being nice because they sent it to me. This is the nicest tuck box I've ever seen in my fucking life. Like it's not going anywhere. It feels like that velvety, waxy thing. It's got spot gloss on it. Like it's a really nice, I've never ever found a nice tuck box. This is the first time I've ever seen it. Um, it doesn't come with like a big book. It comes with not a little white book, but like a medium black book. This is the book. The first half is in French. The second half is in English. Each card gives you a short description as well as the light and shadow aspect. And it's written light and shadow, which I really like. Now, the cards themselves. Listen, I promise you, I promise you, I'm being 100% honest about these cards. This is the most luxurious deck I've ever touched in my fucking life. <laughs> I have never felt a deck that felt more like money to me. And I'm a Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Mercury, okay? I like nice, luxurious things. This is the most luxurious deck I've ever touched in my fucking life. It is thick, and the card sock is so nice. And the cards are all like this kind of matte velvetiness, front and back with spot gloss. Um, the cards are very simple. The artwork is very simple. It's very clean. Uh, I'll show you, despite, it's also very thick. Like this is a very thick deck, but despite that fact, and you guys know how I am about shuffling. Despite the fact that it is a good, thick, quality cardstock, like good, thick quality cardstock, I can still shuffle it with relative ease. Like 
It doesn't struggle. I have a, I have like a tendonitis problem um, from factory work and computer work and photography work. So when decks are really hard to shuffle, it starts to really, like strain my wrist and it hurts. Um, this doesn't do that, even though it's really nice hard stock. Uh, the artwork is all pretty pippish, but the core cards, the Page Night Queen King, all have their tarot associations as the primary piece of artwork, which, if you watch my fucking tarot collection video, was one of the things I've been wanting more of in my in my tarot decks, is I wanted more astrological associations built into the cards so that I can memorize them better. The um, majors have artwork, but it's very minimal, like the tower, um, I'll show you close-ups of these cards. The Tower and Death. You can see how it's very minimal, but it is beautiful artwork. The only four words you need to learn are Knight or Page Knight Queen and King. So the Reine de Deniers. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I know it's Pentacles. I can tell because it's green and because that's a Taurus. And I know that Taurus is Earth and that the green cards in here are Earth. They're all color coded, by the way. Uh, Cavalier de Baton. I'm guessing Baton is Wands. I'm guessing Daenerys is Pentacles. Um, I don't know what Cavalier or Rain is. I need to learn four French words to read this deck. I am going to learn those four French words. <laughs> this deck is, it's so nice, guys. Like, it seriously is. Not for beginners, and you need to learn four French words, but <laughs> it's super nice, and I really, really, really dig it. Black Cat Tarot. Now, uh, this was also by the creator. I'm not going to lie, I was nervous. <laughs> I was nervous because I've never seen a cat tarot that I liked. And I was like, please don't make me drag this stack through that mud. <laughs> so pros and cons. First of all, decent box. It's not like a super fancy box, but it's not a tough box. It's good. Um, there's no book. It comes with no book. So heads up. I mean, I don't really care. I actually didn't even notice it at first until I was writing down my list of pros and cons for each of these decks that I wanted to go over for you guys. And that's when I realized there was no book in this one. Um, the only other con I have for this deck, the only other con, I mean, really the only con, I shouldn't say other because the book and the box isn't a con for me. I have one con, one negative for this deck, and that is that it is large. I forgot on the first deck, I wanted to get my classic rider out so that I can show uh, deck size comparisons to give you guys like a real world, how big they are. Classic. Old school right away deck. Black Cat Tarot. As you can see, it's notably larger. This is Oracle card size. That's the only downside I have on this deck. Um, I have nothing else negative to say about it. I do have things interesting to note, but I have nothing else negative to say about it. It's just large. It's just really large. Uh, I can, however, still shuffle it. It's not like super glossy. It's not. Terrible example. Uh, full disclosure, I have a link for this below. It is an affiliate link. Um, the creator gave me an affiliate link for this deck. Just want to be honest about that. It's very shuffleable, despite the fact that it's so large. The cardstock is. I mean, I have nothing negative to say about it. It's not thin, it's not thick, it's not glossy, it's not super matte. It's just decent, normal, average, good cardstock. Um, each card has a gold line around it, like a gold foil, like border, and I really, really like it. It's, it's really pretty. The artwork itself. <sighs> so this is what I love. I really love when an entire deck is created um, with a specific aesthetic. I love like simple minimalist color palettes, flat like 2D artwork. Um, I love those kinds of decks. I really, really do. Um, and this has that. It is 
like gold, black, and white. That's it. Those are all the colors. Very clean, very simple. All cats, all gold, black, and white. Oh, I love that fact. Now, I will also tell you that there are quite a few cards in here that as I was going through them, I was like, this is a very unusual depiction of these cards. It's a lot of cards in here that, I mean, it's all Rider weight based imagery, but a lot of them um, vary in a way that's notable to me. Um, most of them are pretty standard. Most of them are basically straightforward, um, straightforward, normal Rider weight arm imagery, but some of them vary a lot. So here's one, the King of Pentacles. Instead of just showing the king, it has the king, who actually has kind of a small aspect with a bunch of other cats around him. I find that unusual. There was a couple in particular that I wanted to note. The Five of Pentacles in this deck has one person. It actually is a really good, I actually prefer the interpretation of the Five of Pentacles in this particular deck simply because it feels more like I think the Five of Pentacles is supposed to feel. Five of Pentacles always has like two people like hobbling out in the cold outside of like church windows and it's like this left out in the cold uh, energy. But in this deck there's one cat outside um, crying behind like a little hill like a rock behind a bush um, hiding behind in front of two houses that are full of other cats and that to me, it feels a lot more like being left out in the cold. Like, there's some interpretations in here that vary a little bit that I really love the variation, and there's a couple that vary in a little way that I, I think is notable for that if I'm reading it later on for a client, say, or for myself, I will take that into consideration because it varies in a weird way. That being said, if you're into cats, if you're a cat person and you want a cat deck, I do think this is a really, really great cat deck. I will also say this also shipped from overseas. I want to say Germany. Ooh, I might be wrong about that. I can't remember now where she's located. Um, I'll link her all her stuff below. I actually like following her on Instagram too because she's always posting new artwork for new decks and she's a really great artist, honestly. Um, I recommend her. I will put the link below for this deck if you're into cats, if you want a cat tarot, if you like simple color palettes, this is a really, I would recommend it. I, I put my name on it. I would happily put my name on this deck and say, yep, I recommend this. Go ahead and buy it. Stormy approved. <laughs> my picky ass, Stormy approved. All right, there's one more deck that I was sent by the creator. It's an Oracle deck. This is Marcel's Oracle. Now. Pros and cons. Cons. It is a shitty talk box. I'm not gonna lie. It is. It's not great. Um, that being said, this is an independent, um, it's, a, it's a comic illustrator whose dream was to create an Oracle deck. Um, and that dream has now been fulfilled and they are trying to promote it. Um, Self-published. So you gotta assume that they're on a tight budget for that tiny booklet. Um, I don't think it's necessary because these, I think these cards are self-explanatory and intuitive to read. So the book sucks, but I don't think you even needed the book in the first place. One other downside. It's not great cardstock. It's just not. It's not quality cardstock. I also assume that they were on a budget. So there's that. Um, they're Oracle cards, so I don't usually rifle shuffle them. And that's good because they're kind of too thin to really do that. Not too thin, but too... There's just not, it's not a very thick deck. Like, I mean, it shouldn't be as big as a tarot deck, but this is a Rider weight tarot, and this is this Oracle deck. It's pretty thin. That being said, when they messaged me, he, I don't actually know. When he messaged me, he sent me a link to it, and I saw the artwork, and I wrote him back immediately. And I was like, I would absolutely love to have that, because the artwork is phenomenal. It is. Is it a cheaply made deck? Yep. Yeah. Is the artwork fucking fantastic? Yes. Um, it's a simple, clean color palette, just like I like. It's got this kind of dark blue, black, yellow, um, red. What's well, like a, well, it's, it's a weird, it's a unique shade. It's like a Harry Potter, it's Harry Potter vibes all day. This is Gryffindor. I'm pretty sure this is straight Gryffindor color palette, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. 
I love the color of it. They are really pretty. I'm definitely gonna use these. Um, it's really, it really is beautiful. And I really like, I don't know how to explain it. I just have good vibes from the creator. Like I want this creator to succeed. I don't have um, commission on this deck. I don't have an affiliate link on this deck. I will link it below. I'm not even getting paid to promote it. Uh, I just like, I'm gonna cry right now. I just, I just want uh, success for this deck. Cause I feel like I can, you can feel how much like love and intention went into it. Like you can tell it's a dream come true, you know? It's just, I, I'm always honest, I'm always up front. It's cheap card suck, and it's a cheap tuck box. That's just the facts, right? No getting around it. There's no acting like it's not happening. That's what's happening. Now, let's move on to the decks that you guys sent me. Now, to be clear, um, all of these decks are on my Amazon wish list. So, uh, any complaints that happen, nobody's fault but mine. I put them on my wish list. I wanted them. I got them. It's all on me. Uh, and on that note, <clears throat> the Atlantis Oracle. Now, clearly I wanted this deck, right? Like clearly I was like, I must have this deck. This deck is fantastic, okay? First thing, oh God, okay. That was not a good start here. This is exemplary of the deck itself, honestly. All right, first thing, that's pretty cool, right? I don't know why I want to do that. I don't know what purpose this has in my life. Feels like an expense that could have been better um, poured into the cardstock or something. Or maybe including a book would have been cool. But no, they made the box do this. I don't know. I don't know why. But here we are. So, I don't really have positives about this deck. <laughs> this is the one deck. Out of all 12 of the, de 12 of the decks that I'm going to review here, this is the one deck that I'm just going to be like, don't, don't fucking buy this. And I'm not even going to go in depth into why you shouldn't buy it. I'm gonna go over it very, very briefly. One, there are, there's no front and back. Um, it's artwork on one side, description on the back. Uh, the artwork sucks. It probably would be cool artwork if they didn't put this white vignette all the way to damn near the middle. I might hate it less if they didn't do that. But they did do that and it's kind of cheesy. It looks like early 2000s computer graphics and I'm so sorry to the artist who, who I'm just fucking manhandling right now but that's the fact of the matter okay okay um it's not great artwork and the thing that actually got me i could listen i could overlook it i could overlook it i can overlook shitty artwork if the concept is strong the cardstock isn't the worst cardstock it's not terrible at all i can deal with it um but here's where they lost me they lost me because there's a lot of people who channel atlantis and claim they know all of the of the things that occurred in Atlantis. And none of it can be cooperated, obviously. And if you can't tell my name, I'm kind of, uh, I'm a fan of Atlantis, okay? And what I don't like is really, really specific, uh, we'll say maybe outlandish or non-provable non specifics about the physical reality as it existed in this in in the time of atlantis um instead of focusing on the more philosophical principle which i think is more important and this is one of those people so the back of the decks have the first section is about some information that is apparently deemed to be pure truth about atlantis and the second section is the advice of the card as you can see oftentimes the advice which is the actual useful part is uh real small in comparison to the information that's actually on the card and this can be um, it's, it, it, there's so many things on this deck. Like the first one I picked up and looked at said birth crystals. And it said that each baby is born, that when each baby was born in Atlantis, a crystal materialized next to it. And that was its birth crystal. And it would contain information about its home origin of the stars. And when it held it, it would be comforted by its presence of home. So this is very specific, uh, occurrence which is claimed to be pure truth in Atlantis which is first of all counterproductive to I just have so many things to say that I don't have time to say in this fucking video the point is I'm not about this life okay I just don't about it every one of them is like that every one of them is like that every one of them is a bunch of information that this person I don't even know who she is Diana Cooper I don't know uh I didn't list the creators in the other decks whoopsie I'm not good at that 
I, uh, yeah, I don't know why she's so sure about these things, but I am not as sure. And I feel like it negates the helpfulness that might potentially come from these cards by using them to low-key write a book about what information she deems to be true on Atlantis when that could be in a book somewhere and she could just use these cards to channel helpful information about the philosophical principles behind Atlantis, but she didn't do that. That's not what happened. And so I don't care. That's it. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. Fuck this deck. <laughs> I think we're done slamming decks for the day. I just had to do that one. The slime probably true. I do have something to say with this next deck. And then after that, I think it's all uphill from here. The Elemental Power Tarot. Now, let me just say that I am, I'm a fan of this deck. I am. Mm. There is, however, two major downsides. Um, first of all, nice box. It's got the magnetic flip top. Decent enough book. Card stock's great. It's, don't mow the lawn now. Okay, back from landscapers. Making a ruckus. As I was saying, the Elemental Power Oracle, okay? Now, the basic concept of this deck is that all the elements are on the cards and also there are no people on these cards. No people, not a single person. Uh, animals, yes. People, no. So she writes in here that the concept is that you put yourself in the shoes of the people in, in the deck. So, I mean, I like the concept, but in practice, it seems a little less practical. Um, it kind of makes, it just feels like the, the cards feel empty to me. Um, instead of putting myself in it, I just feel like they're, they're empty. So uh, the chariot, for instance, it's just a chariot with a couple of, uh, dogs, I think, that appear to be chained to the chariot. Uh, sitting there, it's just sitting there. It just feels, it feels inert, you know? Like, without the people in the scenes, it feels like the archetypal energy is missing. But I still like the concept. I would still like to work with this deck. That's not my primary issue with this deck. One is, so the elemental associations... I guess I thought it was going to be deeper than it is. Uh, all of the major iconic cards are spirit element. So they have five elements in this deck, right there, fire, water, and spirit. Uh, so all the majors are considered spirit. And then the minors, uh, everything else is just the, the element of the soup, which I didn't need a little thing in the corner for. Like wands are fire and pentacles are earth and swords are air and cups are water like we know this this is basic tarot 101 so i don't really even see the point of putting the sign of it up in the corner on every single one of these cards every single one of these cards has an elemental symbol associated with it that's not even i'm still not the issue this this is the issue that i have the issue that i have with this deck which by the way i like the card stock uh, I went and read the reviews, and a lot of people were complaining about this cardstock, but I actually really, really, really like it. It's very matte, very, very papery matte. It shuffles well. I really like the cardstock, and I, I'm i obsessed with the backs of these cards. This is probably the prettiest card backs I've ever seen. I like the way it feels. I like the way they shuffle. Um, here, I'll just show you. I love the cardstock. I don't know why people were complaining about it. I could see how it's maybe not built to be, I'm like, it's an heirloom deck. I don't know that it'll, if you rifle shuffle it like this, red shuffle it, I don't know how many generations it'll last because it is just kind of like matte paper, but I like the cardstock a lot. My primary issue is this, because there are no people uh, the core cards are very difficult to discern. Most of the deck is pippish, so all of the minors are, are pretty pippish. Um, it just has the number, so this is what, uh, the seven of pentacles, it just has seven pentacles on it, you know? It's just, it's very pippish. And then when you get to the core cards, um, pages are just these, like, um, cra like, uh, wreath crowns. 
with the symbol of the suit in the corner, so this would be the Page of Cups. Um, knights are kind of these warrior-esque helmets with the symbol in the corner, so this would be the Knight of Cups. But <laughs> I can't tell which one's the king, which one's the king. Honestly, uh, it's hard to discern. It's not really clear. Nothing about this makes it identifiable to me. Um, some of them I think are easier than others, but only when they're side by side. Um, when I have the king and the queen of cups out, I think this is the queen. It looks more like a feminine hat, and I think this is the king, but I have no real way of knowing that. They're just crowns, and they don't look definitively masculine or feminine. And that's especially true with the um, king and queen of wands, which I will show you a close-up shot of. They're pretty much indiscernible. Like, how the fuck do I even know which card I just pulled? So... I like this deck, but I'm going to have to probably write. I'd have to write on them. King of Queen. I'd have to write like King Queen on these cards, I think, to be able to really use them. I also think putting the elements in the corner is kind of a gimmicky. Um, I assumed there was going to be more depth to the elemental aspect of these cards. There isn't. It's just the element of the suits written in the corner of each one. <laughs> The third and final deck that you guys sent to me. Now, in my tarot collection video, I made a whole long thing about how I really wanted to get a tarot deck that had all astrological associations built into the cards, specifically decanic associations. That I wanted to know, you know, each decan of each sign in astrology is associated with a specific tarot card. I don't know which one's which. Um, and I really wanted to learn that. And I really wanted to learn all of the astrological associations between all cards. Every card has some, those, the, there are two studies that go together. And I just, I want to hybridize the information I have in my mind of those two together so that I can more fully understand both. So I said I was really looking for, um, you know, a tarot deck that would do that for me. And oh my fucking God. I did not know what I was doing. I still, I mean, today, yesterday, I constantly get recommendations from people who watch that video. It still gets lots of views every day. Uh, people who are like, you should get this deck. <laughs> the, I wrote down at some point, it's been a while, so it's out of date now, but at some point I wrote down all the decks that everyone recommended that I get. I priced it all to figure out how much money I have to spend to do a haul of all your astrological recommendations. It was hundreds of dollars and I was like I can't fucking do that <laughs> um, I added a couple to my wish list the ones that were the most recommended um, and then I found a couple that I really liked and I purchased the deck that ended up being recommended well a million times that I I put it on my wish list I was like all right everyone's like I should get this deck I'm gonna put it on my wish list and we'll see what happens and I think within, I mean, within days of me putting it on there, somebody purchased it and sent it to me. And I forget now who would, I'm super sorry about that. Um, that being said, uh, this is an Oracle deck. This isn't really what I was talking about, but it's cool. Um, this is an Oracle deck, so it's, it's not a tarot deck, but um, it it's it's all astrology all the way. Um, first thing I'm going to talk about this deck is the packaging. This is the most next little packaging I've ever fucking seen in my life. So there's this outer thing. There's this box, which has a nice magnetic closure. Okay, cool. Inside, we have um, one of these big ribbons to help you pull things out, which I love these things. Hardcover, hardcover book, hardcover book. Another ribbon for a whole other box that actually has your cards in it. This is like the Shaman's Oracle packaging, really. And then another ribbon to actually get the cards out. Like this is <laughs> so much packaging, which is not a complaint. I'm impressed. So, these cards, uh, matte cards, good cardstock, uh, oracle based, I would consider them to be a study deck. Um, I think, I think they would make a really good oracle deck, um, for, to expand upon readings once you know them well, or if you have an astrological background and can read, 
you know, houses and all the planets and everything. I do not know them all that well, so this is very useful. That being said, I think this deck would be great to write all over. <laughs> I know that makes a lot of you cringe, but listen, let me hear me out. All of these cards are incredibly light and pastel. If I take a black Sharpie, it's just gonna be like, this becomes a background. They're very, very blank. You know, like air, just in the corner, and then your keywords are here. The imagery isn't, there's not like a lot of symbolic imagery happening here. Scorpio, the word, just kind of some stuff. There's a little symbology, we've got a snake, a skull, a butterfly, um, and then keywords are down here, which is intensity, exposing, purging, and renewing. I could fill all of this space in with more information. I think this would be a really, 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 really good study deck that I think would be really, really, really good to write all over <laughs> for to expand upon and to customize and to really dig into your astrological studies. That's what I think about this deck. I think it's an awesome deck. I'll show you a close-up of the shots. I'm sure I already have. All right, before I get into all of the decks that I purchased, I need to do a clarification from my tarot collection video. In that video, I reviewed uh, Tarot of the Divine. First of all, I had no idea what to call the cardstock. I was trying to describe it as best as I could. Somebody messaged, <laughs> somebody commented just recently, like, yo, that's a linen finish. And I've... <laughs> She said it very nicely, but I got the vibe of like, God, you're stupid. <laughs> Not from her, just that's what I felt like. So, uh, linen finish is what they're called. Also, I talked a lot in that video about how these cards are hard for me to read because they're all based on folklore and fairy tales that I don't actually know. And it's not intuitive. The imagery is very counter to what I'm traditionally familiar with as far as right away is concerned. Um, and a bunch of people were like, fuck you, get the book and read it, and then that won't be a problem anymore. And so finally, I put the book on my wish list, and then it's, I mean, I mean within probably 48 hours when we put it on the wish list, somebody purchased it and sent it to me. So, just as a clarification from my past video, if you decide to get this deck, which is a dope deck, as I clearly said a bunch of times, get the book also. And also, it's linen finish. And also, I'm fucking sorry, guys. Jesus. All right, since we just talked about my desire to find a deeper dive deck into tarot, I wanted to get into the hermetic principles and, and kind of the astrological principles and tie in the Kabbalah and everything. And um, that's really what I was looking for when I asked for all that stuff. And I got... Um, a really good recommendation, a gift, and I found out a solution. So I'm going to go over all the things that I purchased to solve that issue and that I received. First is a gift that I got. It was on my wish list. I actually forgot I even put it on my wish list, and, and one of you guys sent it to me. I don't remember who it was. I feel terrible about that. I have all my notes on my wall, but I don't remember who sent what anymore. So 36 Secrets, A Decanic Journey Through the Minor Arcana of the Tarot. So I've started digging into this, and it's fucking phenomenal um it goes over all of the minor arcana cards and really really in depth <laughs> and this is the kind of shit i'm looking for i will link this below as well it's really it's really changing the way i look at all the cards it's really 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 like i'm so excited to get through this all right the First deck that I bought, oh, I also bought, sorry, I also got the Kabbalistic Tarot, uh, a textbook of mystical philosophy. Uh, this is another one of those super deep dive books um, that I'm really, I haven't really dug into this one yet. I'm really excited to, um, yeah, <laughs> it's just, I'm trying to really take a, a deep approach to all of these cards. The first deck that I got, which I had been wanting for a long time, and that I got the Kabbalistic Tarot book to go with, is the Hermetic Tarot. So you've probably seen this deck before, or you might not have, but 
This is see, based upon the esoteric workings of the Secret Order of the Golden Dawn by Godfrey Dowson. So, comes a little white book, but I got the Kabbalistic Tarot to go with it. I wish it had color. That's my only thing. And I only wish that because it would help really separate the imagery in a way that would help me easily identify all of it. These things are packed with symbology. Packed, 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 packed. As far as actual review, it's a standard. It's very Rider Waitey, maybe a little glossier than a normal Rider Waite deck. But I'm, I haven't, I haven't even really started fucking with it. I'm going to be honest. I haven't. So I don't even really want to use this deck until I start digging into that book. I think it's going to be important for me to do it that way. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm just really, really working my way up to a Toth deck. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, mm, I can feel it calling and I just haven't gotten there yet. It's going to happen soon though. And this is, I think, step one. Um... Yeah, I recommend if you want to do a deep dive, I'll put this and the book, because I think the book's going to be necessary, with it below. All right, now the one recommendation that I got from all the comments, it disappeared. And that happens and I don't understand why. Sometimes comments are left and I don't know if the person deletes them or if YouTube deletes them or I don't know what the thing is. Um, sometimes somebody will come, I've even been accused once of deleting somebody's comment and I was like, I didn't delete your shit. Like I, it just does that sometimes. I have no idea why. I'll click on a comment, um, inside of my app and it's just, it'll just say not available. It's gone. Like it's gone and it's not there anymore. This is one of those cases. It was the only person recommended this deck. This is an independent deck. Um, I had to buy it through the website itself. It was not cheap. And I got the book that went with it. Also not cheap. Um, but somebody recommended it, and as soon as I saw the recommendation, I forget what they wrote, but I was like, God, this sound, it feels right. And I clicked on their comment to, like, respond, and it was gone. But luckily I took a screenshot before I clicked on it, and now it's not there anymore. So this is the Tarot of the Holy Light, and this is the book that I got to go with it, that the author also makes. This book is no joke. Like, this is a whole thing. <laughs> there are charts in the back and everything. Um, hardcover box, nothing special. Um, these, I don't like the backs, I'll be honest. The back design is kind of... Mm. They're uh, larger than a normal tarot deck. So this is a regular Rider weight. This is this one. Um, it's not like crazy large, but it's larger. That being said, it has everything on it. It reminds me kind of like all the imagery in this deck, but full color. Um, it's got, I think it's like a linen-y finish. They're, neat, they're nice cards. Um, it even has the exact, the exact degree, the, the decan right here. This is the first decan, Six of Wands is the first decan of Leo ruled by Sun. And that is, what card am I looking at? I don't even know. Oh, Six, six of Wands, I just said that. So Six of Wands is the first decan of Leo. Did not know that. See, now I get to know that. It also has shit tons of symbolic, like hermetic principles and stuff in the cards. Queen of Swords is a Libra. Knight of Pentacles, Virgo. I'm so excited to have this right on the fucking cards. And aside from that, there is additionally, it also has all the symbols. So the Six of Pentacles is the first decan of Taurus, ruled by Venus. It says which decan, which sign, which planet rules it. Right there, on the fucking card. I don't know who recommended this. I love you. <laughs> this is the best declaration I've ever gotten. I've never seen this deck anywhere. The comment disappeared immediately. I don't even know who said it. I only found this deck available on the creator's website. Never heard of it. It's fucking fantastic. Um, I'm so excited. Like, I'm so excited. I haven't really started to dive into this yet. I plan to very, very soon. I've been very busy with just the channel and launching the podcast and the merch and all that. Like, personal stuff, life, kids, single mom shit. Like, <laughs> I've been really busy. But I'm really planning to dig into this desk, this deck, and I and I genuinely am so excited, so excited. I started going through this book 
and I couldn't believe how much information is in it. Like this, this 36 Secrets, this deck, the Kabbalistic Tarot and the Hermetic Tarot, between this right here, once I finish all this, which I plan to do by the end of the year, I'm going to have a whole different understanding of Tarot and I'm fucking living for it. The Golden Nouveau Tarot. So classic writer, but redone. Uh, tuck box, not a shitty tuck box though. Pretty, pretty nice tuck box. Um, classic right away imagery, but redone beautifully. I'll show you shots of it. Uh, shitty white book, um, but who cares? It's a classic writer deck. I don't really need a book. Everything that is the sky is gold foil. Every piece of sky, what would be the sky in a classic right away image is gold foil. I'm hoping that this is picking up in the light. But I can't actually tell. I used these cards in the pick a card I just posted. They have already worked their way into my day to day like general rotation because they're legit. It's just a classic writer, good card stock, no complaints, but gold. Beautiful. Just fucking beautiful. It's just a beautiful deck. It's just a beautiful writer deck. That's what it is. Beautiful right away deck. In the talk box with a shitty book, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card stock. Next up. So, Goddess for Visions is a subscription box that I used to get all the time. Um, and then I kind of have gotten it on and off periodically. I still follow them on Instagram, though. They posted that they were going to be including a Beyond the Maria pocket size edition deck in one of their boxes. And I was like, fucking take my money. So I re-signed up for the subscription. <laughs> I was just gonna get it for the month, but I forgot to un, un sign up and I just got another one in the mail yesterday and I was like, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> so if you've seen my videos before, you know, I'm a huge fan of the Beyond, Beyond Lumeria deck. Like this is my favorite Oracle deck. Uh, there's a pocket size now. <laughs> uh, it was originally put in Goss Vision's box, but you can get it online now. I'll put a link below. It'll be an affiliate link uh, just for Amazon, but look at, look at it. There is only one downside. Um, because it's a pocket size deck, uh, there's no book. The, there's a summary of the card on the, on the other side of each card. So the artwork is borderless on one side. The information is on the back. You can't like spread these out and not know like what's on. I don't still, I don't like, I don't pick cards that way anyways. Uh, so that doesn't bother me at all. But I know a lot of people do do that. They will like to lay it out and cut it or pull them and pull out from them. I don't do any of that. So it doesn't bother me. But if you are, that's notable. Um, it's an Oracle deck, so I usually will just overhand it. Um, I have rifle shuffled it. I can not well, they're a little too short. Um, but it's the same deck. It's the same deck, um, but tiny and portable. Uh, I have to go to California at the end of this month. This bitch is going to go with me, I'll tell you right now. Like, I can put this in my purse. Like, I can have this all the time. Like, I, I don't have to leave home without it. I can take Lumeria with me everywhere I go, forever. So, big fan. I will link this below. Pocket edition of the Beyond Lumeria deck. It's also pretty cheap, I think. Now, if you've seen my Oracle collection video, or you watched um, my Ostara ritual video, the like pretty cards I used there uh, is the Divine Animals Oracle. So that's by Stacey DeMarco. She also made the Elemental Oracle, which has a holographic box, by the way. And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> so I just got this. Um, I haven't used it much. I did use it in my thicker card. The book is also, by the way, totally holographic. Uh, the sides of the cards are silver. Um, and it's the same like cardstock, artwork, everything from the Divine Animals Oracle, but this time it's elemental. Um, same system where you have the word and then like the word of what the card is and then also you have a keyword So it's easy to read kind of intuitively um, This one is ice the element is ice the keyword is purity Snow is silence east is beginnings It's all different kind of archetypal energies with keywords and then the book has an expansion on what that Means and how to interpret it and that whole kind of thing 
it's a super awesome deck if you're looking for, I mean, I had, I think it's great. Um, it's, I've already started to work it into my client rotations. It's, I've already started to work it into my own readings. It's very generally applied to any kind of, um, reading. It's very helpful. It's got the clarity. It's just a good standard all around. It's one of my, it's, it's quickly becoming one of my default decks. Like, all right, we'll just pull some elemental energy to see what else we can get out of, out of a reading for clarity. So I'll link this below as well, affiliate link, and uh, recommend it, it's really cool. Last, but certainly not least, when I first saw this deck, I was like, oh my fucking God, I want this so bad, and I threw it on my wish list. And then I was like, fuck, I don't even wanna wait for someone to purchase it for me. I'm just gonna go get it, like I can't wait. And it was sold out. And it was sold out everywhere. And I couldn't get it anywhere online. Website sold out. It didn't exist anymore. And I was heartbroken. <laughs> and I had so much regret. Um, and then the other day, I saw that it was back. It was back in stock. And to be honest, I didn't have the money to spend on this deck. But I was not about to lose it again. <laughs> so, a lot of fair child. The Kali Oracle. So... Um, I get questions semi-often about working with deities and stuff. You want me to make videos on it? That's not really a thing that I do. Um, it's not something that I really put in my practice very regularly. There are only two deities that I ever really work with. One of them is Kali. I'm a big fan of Kali. <laughs> but um, it's not something that... I don't work with her because I'm super knowledgeable of her. And, and it just it's happened very organically. Um, I don't really know a lot about her. Her, it's 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 Kali and Ganesh, and I and I don't really know why Hindu deities are my jam, but that's just what happened. I don't really know any of the like Hindu uh, history or myths and legends about either of them, to be honest, not really. Um, because I don't know a lot about it. I'm excited for this deck. Um, I have a lot of other things I need to study right now, but I purchased this for later study. This deck is going to give me so much more information about the many, many, many facets of Kali. Um, I started going to this deck and I was like, if you watch Game of Thrones, you'll understand. <laughs> I started going to this deck and I was like, is Kali the many face god? What is happening? Um, so every card in here, first of all, the artwork, can we just, for a second, can we just talk about this? I, oh my god, it's so pretty. These, I, the cardstock is, it's beautiful, it's matte, it's kind of like that waxy, beautiful, I can't even describe it. The artwork is phenomenal. I can't even pronounce most <laughs> of what's in here, but they're like, facets and things associated with with her and if you use the book which I absolutely will it kind of this one I mean there's invocation rituals in here and it gives you kind of like all the myths and legends and how each one of these things is tied to Kali and I'm really excited to study it and learn it and get to know her better through these cards um they're fucking beautiful. They're so beautiful. I mean, it's a, it looks like oil paintings is what it looks like. Um, in love. I'm just in love with it. Um, I, I don't have a lot to say about it specifically, about how it works or pulls, because this is one of those decks that I plan to stash away and use very respectively and very limitedly. Um, and to study uh, Kali mostly, and I don't plan on pulling it out all really nilly for readings. Like it's just like it's an elemental oracle. But if you're somebody who is into Kali, this deck is whew, so beautiful, and I'm so in love with it. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So before I do my outro, I have a quick question for you. Low key scared to ask this after what happened last time, but. These, this, these decks right here, the Hermetic Tarot and the Holy Light Tarot, Tarot of the Holy Light, um, these really in-depth decks that have astrological stuff on their decanic information and Hermetic principles, et cetera, et cetera, these really deep study decks, I'm interested more. 
I, I think I want to get more of these. Um, I mean, I'm, I still love, you know, just my pretty Rider weight decks and all that kind of stuff. It's great, but I'm ready to dive real deep. I'm interested in more of these um, and more, you know, really nice deep dive kind of books. So if you know, you have some recommendations, oh God, um, drop them below. This feels like a little college textbook. <laughs> um, drop your recommendations below for any and all uh, decks like this. I am 100% down to deep dive. Uh, that being said, thank you so, so, so much uh, for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit like, thumbs up. That's the same thing. Whoops. And subscribe, hit the bell, blah, blah, blah. Leave a comment. I have links below for all kinds of shit. My podcast, my Facebook group, merch, booking readings with me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'll also link below my previous collection videos and my favorites video if you want to see those. And yeah. So that's it. And have a wonderful day and I'll see you next video. Bye.